Continuing to take a look at chemical reactions, one of the great things about chemistry that I really enjoy is how it tends to follow patterns. There are some exceptions to some rules that, that we have learned, um, but for the most part, chemistry is very pattern-based. An example of that is the types of chemical reactions that we're going to look at. For introductory chemistry, we're going to look at five different types of reactions. And you're generally told that these are the only five types of reactions that occur, which isn't exactly true, but for our purposes in this course, these are the only five types of reactions you're going to see, or, or perhaps more accurately, that you're required to know. Okay? For each of these reactions, they all follow patterns. Our goal is to take a look at, okay, what are the patterns, what are the hints, what are the things that I can look at that will tell me right away what kind of reaction this is, um, and, and also get kind of an, uh, an understanding of what's happening in the different reactions. The first reaction we're going to take a look at is a composition or a formation reaction. It occurs when two or more simple substances combine to form a more complex substance. Okay, so the general pattern that, uh, that we go through here is we take two simple substances Usually you'll see them as elements. Sometimes you'll see them as small compounds and they will combine to form one compound. Okay, Compound being a more complex substance. Now what's the hint? What are we looking for when we see a formation reaction? Two or more things going together to form a, a bigger compound. The hint, the one thing you can take a look at right away that you'll say, bam, that's a formation reaction, is there is only one product. So every single formation reaction has only one product at the end. You can have as many reactants as you want. As soon as you see one product, you say, oh yes, that's a formation reaction. Formation reactions are the only type of reactions that um, have one product. Okay, all other, all other reactions have more than one product. An example of this could be, um, I don't know, the formation of water. We've looked at this. So here are simple substances going together to form a more complex substance. Just for fun, we can balance. So as you can see, just one product. I could go through several examples here. That's not my job, that's your job. Uh, you're going to go through several, several examples where you can find um, only one product that will tell you it's a formation reaction. So moving forward, let's take a look at the opposite of that, a decomposition reaction. So when something decomposes, like if we're taking a look at um, you know, an, an animal or a plant that dies and then it decomposes, it gets broken down. Well, it's the same thing in uh, chemistry with chemicals. The chemicals in a decomposition reaction get broken down. In fact, decomposition is the reverse of what we just looked at, composition or a formation reaction. So we take a complex substance, we break it down into two or more simpler substances. So generally, this looks like your compound breaks down into simpler substances. Sometimes, guys, these are small, these are elements. Sometimes they're smaller compounds. Okay, it just depends uh, what it is you're breaking down. The hint, the big indicator, what it is that you are looking for um, in terms of how will I know if the reaction I'm looking at is a decomposition reaction. Decomposition reactions are the only ones that have only one reactant. Every other chemical reaction has more than one reactant, two or three or, or maybe four. Um, decomposition reactions have only one reactant. Okay, so let's take a look at that water equation. Did you know that we can break water down? Okay, you can do that by um, supplying some energy into it and you'll break the water into its composing elements, that hydrogen and oxygen. 
And so you guys can see we have just one reactant here. That's the big key that we're looking for for decomposition reactions. Next type is a single replacement reaction. Okay, single replacement reaction. What we're looking for here is, uh, or what happens here, I guess, is one element replaces another element with a like charge in a compound. More on that in a moment. Okay, but here's the general pattern. Okay, so generally, this looks like A, so some element plus some compound, making a new combination element and compound. So you can see that the A and B have then swapped spots. Okay, the hint that you're looking for on this one, the, the I guess the thing that makes a, a single replacement reaction unique, is you're looking for element plus ionic compound making a new element plus ionic compound. Okay, so keep in mind that the ones on the product side, these will be different than the ones on the reactant side. If they were the same, that would not be a chemical reaction. An example of this, okay, an example of this uh, would be, for example, I'll show you my favorite single replacement reaction, okay? Uh, it's when we take copper and silver nitrate and we react them together. And in fact, you're going to do this in a lab. What's going to happen, okay, remember we're pl replacing another element with a like charge. So in this particular reaction, copper doesn't have a charge because it's an atom, but when it goes into an ionic compound, it will have a charge. When we look at our ionic compound here, we see, okay, we've got silver and nitrate. Those are our two ions. Who is copper going to swap with? Well, it's going to swap with whatever has the like charge. Remember, copper forms cations. In this silver nitrate compound, the silver is the cation. So what we'll get is silver on its own and then copper to nitrate. Okay. Now, I won't balance this one because... Uh, that basically would take away the whole point of you guys doing the lab. So um, I just want you to be able to see that what happens is the copper and the silver are swapping spots. Okay, copper and silver will never get together. We will not have a compound made of copper and silver. We could make a mixture, but not make a compound. So they swap spots because they have like charges. This can happen with anions as well. Okay, so for example, we could have, let's say, sodium iodide, and we could react it with chlorine, except for chlorine is Cl2. Sorry. Uh, and then we would get sodium chloride and iodine, and remember iodine is one of those diatomics as well. Okay, so you can see what's happened here. Chlorine being the element that's present, okay, when it forms ions, it forms anions. So it's going to want to swap spots with the anion from this ionic compound. That's the iodine. Okay, so chlorine and iodine swap spots. That's a single replacement reaction. We can spice that up by having a double replacement reaction. So the cation of one compound changes place with the cation of a second compound, okay? The general pattern that we are looking for here is we're going to have a couple of compounds and uh, the cations would swap spots. That's your general pattern. The hint that we are looking for is we have two and only two, two and only two ionic and only ionic compounds as both products and reactants.
Okay, so two ionic uh, compounds as your reactants, two ionic, two different ionic compounds as your products. Okay, um, an example of this. An example of this, uh, we could say, would be, off the top of my head, let's go aluminum nitrate. Oops, what's happening here? Technical difficulties. Aluminum nitrate plus sodium hydroxide. Okay, in taking a look at these, these are two ionic compounds. I'm just going to write this aluminum a little bit nicer for you guys. You're welcome. And then, of course, remembering my subscript. All right, so these are two ionic compounds. When we take a look at these ionic compounds, we got to know, well, what's the cation, what's the anion? Okay, because we have to make sure that we're giving them the right partners on the other side. Cations, I'll underline here, aluminum and sodium. They're going to swap spots with each other. Not swap spots to get together with each other, but swap spots with each other so that they get paired up with the opposite anion. So what we'll get is NaNO3. So sodium now going with our nitrate and aluminum now going with our hydroxide. I hope that you can see how we have the cations switching spots, okay? So key that we're looking for here, two ionic compounds as both products and reactants. What happens? The cations swap spots. Uh, the last type of reaction we are going to look at, okay? The last type is a combustion reaction. Combustion means burning, okay? It means setting something on fire. How does that happen? Well, a substance has to burn in the presence of oxygen to form the most common oxides. You guys will need to know what are these most common oxides. So when I burn something that contains carbon, the most common oxide of carbon is carbon dioxide. When I burn something that contains hydrogen, the most common oxide of hydrogen is water. Sulfur, most common oxide, sulfur dioxide. And then metals, their most common oxide uh, is the oxide of the metal, so the metal plus oxygen in an ionic compound where the metal has the most common ion charge. Okay, I'll make sure I do an example so you guys can see. Here's the hint. What's the hint that we're looking for? The hint, this is a big one, uh, a big giveaway, makes combustion reactions really easy to see. Oxygen is a reactant. So it doesn't matter what the products are, it doesn't matter what else is reacting. When you see oxygen as a reactant, boom, that's a combustion reaction. Let's take a look at an example then. Let's take a look at magnesium. Now if you have not had the opportunity to see magnesium burn, it's really quite fantastic um, and you should take a look at that. When I burn magnesium, I react it with oxygen. What happens is I form a compound of magnesium oxide. Now, magnesium is not a multivalent metal. It only has, uh, it only forms cations with one charge. That's a plus two charge, okay? Um, in taking a look at this, some of you might say, hey, wait a second. This actually looks really familiar because what I'm seeing here is I have only one product. Wait, didn't you say that that was a formation reaction? Absolutely. So sometimes, ladies and gents, um, formation reactions and combustion reactions are one and the same. So sometimes combustion reactions can be formation, especially when we're just uh, we're burning uh, metals. Okay. So either, in those cases, either uh, saying it's a combustion reaction or it's a formation reaction are acceptable, okay? Let's take a look at what happens when we have a multivalent uh, metal, okay? I'll take, I like copper. Let's take copper and we're going to burn it in the presence of oxygen, okay? Copper 
Copper is a multivalent metal. It can form ions. It can form either copper two ions, which means they have a two plus charge, or it can form copper one ions, which means it's copper with a one plus charge. In this case, uh, what's going to happen is we are going to form the most common ion charge. Okay, so copper, if you look on your periodic table, you'll see that the two plus charge is listed first. So copper's most common ion charge is copper two. Okay, two plus, which means it would form copper two oxide, CuO. Okay, keep that hint in mind. Oxygen is a reactant in all combustion reactions. Do they sometimes look like formation reactions? Yeah, they sometimes do. Now, again, the key to success in chemistry and the key to starting to have these patterns uh, make sense to you so that you can, can take a look at a reaction and see it right away is practice. In your practice, if you come across a reaction where you're looking at it and it's got maybe more than one product and more than one reactant, but they're not necessarily um, a single replacement or a double replacement or a combustion reaction, okay? If, if you look at a reaction that doesn't seem to follow any of the patterns that we've looked at here, we just call that, for now, other. So you'll call that an other reaction. Um, and that's perfectly acceptable to say. If you move on in chemistry, you learn about all the other fun types of, uh, of reactions you can take a look at. So get going with your practice, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.